Hi, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, welcome to my channel. I'm going to be talking about my labor and delivery story of when I gave birth to my daughter Amara. Let me start by saying this. I had not a lot of anxiety about the birth itself, like the pain and the labor, like I wasn't worried about that. My biggest worry was that I was going to go into labor at a bad time or I wouldn't know that I was in labor until I was like seven centimeters and like 10 centimeters by the time I got to the hospital. Stuff that probably won't happen, but it could happen. And so that was my biggest anxiety for birth. So I wanted to get induced. And so we scheduled it out and they let me know that the day that I picked, which was the first day that I could get induced and also since it was going to be around Thanksgiving, one of the only days that I could get induced before my due date. I picked the, the earliest day to get induced, but since it was so close to Thanksgiving, there was a lot of people wanting that specific day, and so it was like hit or miss if I would be able to get that day. We wouldn't know until the day of. So I go to sleep the night before, like kind of mentally preparing, to give birth the next day like I had my stuff already and we had a game plan of like who was gonna be there and where my stuff was and we like had it all worked out but I went to bed thinking it's not gonna happen tomorrow and it did they called me at 6 a.m. and they're like we have a bed ready for you if you can get here within the hour that would be great it still hadn't hit me yet like I'm gonna go to the hospital and give birth to my daughter. So I'm getting my stuff together and I'm trying to eat something because I didn't know if I'd be able to eat once I got there and so much running through my head. Like I was excited, I was nervous, but I wasn't anxious, which is awesome because <laughs> I'm a very like anxious person. We get to the hospital and we check in. My mom, who is my person, she was there with me through the birth. We got there and they give us the the plan of what they're gonna do. I was only, I think, at a, a one when we got there because I hadn't really been having contractions. And so they gave me a pill. I forget exactly what it was called, but it's to, like to soften my cervix and kind of get things moving. They did that and I started having some contractions. They weren't painful by any means, just pressure kind of and cramping. So we did that for a while and that was, that started about eight or nine. They had to give me an IV and that was horrible. They couldn't find a vein. It was awful. During that time, like me and my mom, we were having fun. We were cracking jokes and it was so much fun. I did my makeup, which made me feel a little bit more at home. Things were not progressing a whole lot. I wasn't having like intense contractions. And so around 12, my doctor decided to break my water. That was incredibly painful, a lot more painful than I expected to be. I did have a hard time with that, but after that was done, the contractions got real. <laughs> I was in a lot of pain and they were happening very quickly and close together. I was up walking around and I remember I went to the bathroom and I had a contraction when I got to the door of the bathroom while I was using the restroom and then when I was getting up to leave the restroom. And my favorite position at that moment was just leaning over like a hard desk or a, something solid and just kind of moving my legs back and forth and just kind of waiting it out until I could move again. And so that worked for a while. They wanted me to like try using the exercise ball and that I didn't want to sit down. I didn't want any more pressure because that was just incredibly painful. And so what we ended up doing is we put the exercise ball on the bed and I was laying over the exercise ball. So the exercise ball was kind of at my chest, like right here. And so I could lay my head down on it and I was gripping on to the like handle rail of the bed. And as far as pain management, um, I used the nitrous for a little bit and that didn't do anything for me. It was almost more annoying and I couldn't breathe because it wasn't like there was air 
coming into my face. It was like I just had a mask on and when I would inhale, then it would like kind of suction onto my face and make this loud noise and it just wasn't calming by any means. And as far as like pain management goes, I don't feel like it did anything just personally for me. And I was just kind of waiting out the epidural because I didn't want to get it too soon. And that was also kind of not a pride thing, but I didn't want to be the girl that, you know, gets an epidural super early because I can't handle the pain. And the last that they checked me, I was at a four. I didn't want to be with an epidural at a four and because I didn't know how long my labor was going to last. I kind of mentioned it to the nurse because they want me to tell them like an hour before I want the epidural because it takes a long time to like write it in and get the anesthesiologist down and to actually place it and for the medicine to work at the point where I was like, I'm feeling these, they're coming hard, and I'm in a lot of pain. I asked about the epidural, and my nurse was like, I don't know if you wanna do that, sweetie, you're only at a four. So I kind of just shut down and like shrugged it off, and it was, I just kind of accepted, like I'm just gonna be in this pain for a long time. And thankfully my mom spoke up and was like, I think she wants the epidural. And the nurse was like, okay and goes and like writes it up and I was very thankful because by the time the wonderful woman who placed the epidural came in I was already in extreme pain. I didn't know how long I'd be able to last honestly. They placed the epidural no problem and then once that like started working I was the happiest person in the world like going from extreme pain to nothing is phenomenal. They needed me in a certain position to let the epidural medication like disperse correctly. Then with every contraction, they were noticing that baby girl's heart rate was dipping. They didn't seem super alarmed by it, but obviously as a mom, when you see your little girl's heart rate go from good to not great, it, it's alarming. And so they ended up just moving me positions to get her in a better position, I guess. Then my epidural wasn't working at all. I felt every contraction, but it was all in my back, like my lower back. And that was the worst pain that I had ever felt. And then the, the nurse let me know, she's like, well, have you been pressing your button? Because apparently I could get more medication if I pressed a button that nobody told me about. The anesthesiologist came back in and kind of pumped some more through and that helped. And then they checked me and they're like, oh, you're at a 10. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Cause I felt like I hadn't been in labor for that long. She's like, yeah. You're ready to push. We're gonna call the doctor. When she told me that I was at a 10, I think I looked at her and I was like, you're kidding, right? She's like, no. I was like, I'm at a 10, me? This patient right here? The lights go on and like the stirrups come up and they're getting me into position. And you know, we do some practice pushes before the doctor got there. Cause like, you don't really make a whole lot of progress at first. Right before I started pushing, I was like ready and then I had so much anxiety and I felt like I was gonna have a panic attack and I started crying and breathing heavy and my mom kind of told the nurse like we're gonna take a step back like we need a second it was a lot to process all at one time like I'm about to meet her like this is gonna become real and so we kind of just paused for a beat then I was like, okay, you know, I'm ready. And I started pushing. I think I pushed for around an hour. And when you push, it's not like pushing for an hour straight because that would be horrible. It's on every contraction. And so like you push for 10 seconds and then you wait for the next contraction to come up and then you push on that contraction. So we were doing that and I was starting to make progress and so the doctor came in and so I had my mom on my left side and the nurse on my other, my right side and then the doctor obviously in the middle. He would count to 10 and my mom eventually was the person to count to 10 and that was really nice until she started getting really lightheaded and had to sit down in between contractions and I'm like okay I need someone else to count because she can't 
because like they you have masks on and I thankfully didn't have to wear a mask which was amazing I can't imagine laboring with the mask on when the next contraction hit um, nobody was counting and so I'm sitting there pushing and I like <laughs> I call out five six seven eight nine ten and so like I had to finish for myself and then the nurse was like, okay, next contraction, I got it. And I was like, thank you. So pushing for a while and then like really starting to make progress and I was able to feel down and feel the top of her head. And you know, they called out, they're like, she has a lot of hair, it's really dark. And that made me tear up a little bit, like just cause that's the first visual thing, I guess I kind of got to learn about her was her hair because obviously I can't see her when she's inside of me and so it was amazing to find out that she had a lot of hair and so I'm pushing to get her head out and everyone tells me to stop. She had the cord wrapped around her neck and the doctor was able to get it out no problem. I'm still pushing and then he gets like her arms out, like her shoulders out and her arms out and the doctor is like, okay, grab her and pull her out and I'm like nope he's like grab her and pull her out and I'm like no sir and he's like okay and so he pulls her out and she gets put on my chest and that is the most amazing feeling and hearing her cry for the first time such a sweet little cry especially compared to her little cry right now. She's in her bouncer over here. It was just the most amazing feeling of one, like I did this and two, like I finally get to meet her. I get to see her, like she's in my world now. Like it's, I can't even describe how amazing that feeling is of like, here is my child. We had her on my chest for a while and they cut the cord. I wasn't really interested in doing it and neither was my mom. And so the nurse um, cut the cord. They told us later, they showed me that her cord was tied in a knot. And apparently it was super, super long. Um, she was 100% okay, not affected by it, which is amazing. Her dips in heart rate when I was in labor was due to the cord around her neck. There's a lot of things that could have gone badly with both of those things, but she came out perfect and healthy. We got to spend a little time together and then they took her to clean her off and to weigh her and she was a little bit cold and I think that was because I was cold and so they warmed her up under the little light bulb. She was like a little lizard. Like she was so happy. She just laid there quietly under the light because uh, it was really warm. But they got her footprints done and her feet are long. Like they're long and skinny, especially when she was a newborn. They look like little rabbit feet, just so long. And so they gave her back to me and I got to breastfeed her and she latched on right away. Like everyone was pretty surprised. And I had very minimal tearing. I think I only had like one semi tear that I needed like a couple stitches for, um, but nothing major. After that, we got moved up to like the recovery room. We stayed that night and then another night and then got discharged around the night after that, um, which was Thanksgiving. And she has just been the best little baby. Uh, she eats great. She has definitely gained some weight, which is awesome. Right now she is seven weeks old. I'm a little late at the video. Um, and she's got some chubby cheeks and some rolls on her thighs and she's doing awesome. Yeah, she's smiling right now. My mom was a huge help, is still a huge help. When we got home, I wasn't able to pick her up or put her down in her crib, and so she had to come help me with that. I couldn't even stand up from a chair while holding her. I was in a lot of pain, and eventually, you know, that got less and less, and I was able to, like, make it through the night without having to call my mom downstairs, which was really awesome just because I don't have a partner in this so 
I have my mom and she's been absolutely phenomenal. Her name is Amara and we call her Mari as a nickname. Her middle name is Lynn after my mom. That's her middle name. And so she's Amara Lynn or my mom likes to call her little Mari Lynn. She's just beautiful. She's so much fun. Um, as she's getting older, it's fun to just see the new things that she's doing. Like right now, her biggest thing is she will stick her tongue out every chance she gets and she like plays with her tongue. She's been like really socially smiling. Like when she sees my face and I talk to her, she gives me some big smiles. I'll include some pictures after this just of me in labor and delivery and just that day. Do you want to join me for the outro, little girl? Say hi. Like I said before, she is seven weeks and just the cutest little thing. She's got some good cheeks going on. What is that face? Just woke up, so she's a little, little groggy. Um, but here she is. There's her tongue. Oh. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to do more videos um, in the future. Updates on her, updates on me, maybe some vlogs. Make sure to like and comment down below and follow for more videos of this cutie pie. And until next time, remember that you're awesome and have a wonderful day. Say bye!